And here we are, KWF Kiki. We are number one in the morning. Hey, I'm uh, Dr. Pepper, and I have Count Chocula here. That's right, Scott. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we have here Charlie from Upsetting. What's up? Also known as Squeegee Squilliam. It's good to be on the show. Good, good, Squeegee. Uh, how you doing, Squeegee? <laughs> uh no, another day in the life uh been been having having some good chill times at home while we uh get the house tested because we had a roommate test positive for dangle covid yeah we were gonna have you guys here with us but uh, we decided that's probably not a good idea that's right yeah absolutely glad we could still make it happen though as you can see i've got the guys with me uh yeah. <laughs> drew's drew's also in the house hold on pull him up one second defying gravity over there here he, oh, oh here he comes oh. here he comes here he comes sort of here he comes. and there he goes he's a busy guy it was a mustache Got a lot going on i'm gonna yeah. shift it over so y'all keep caleb in the screen ah, there we go. there's our guy yeah all righty cool <laughs> well yeah we just wanted to be able to talk to you a little bit um so we're zooming it hell yeah zooming it touchdown um yeah, I well, I had a question to start out with, uh, Charlie. What you're not, you guys are not upsetting at all. What's with the name? Uh, yeah, well, you know, like personally, as individuals, we're we're pretty easygoing dudes. But um, we our our former band name when I had first started working with Kevin and Caleb was Teenage Sex, which I remember. Yeah, we were we were making a little bit more uh, like kind of garage punk music at the time. Uh, it's also a project Caleb started when he was like 15 years old. So teenage sex had a lot more context, but um, we we started writing music that was a lot more post rock in structure, a lot more kind of like complex in, in instrumentation and definitely that looked at much more like introspective kind of like deep emotional themes. Um, so there, there was just a lot of transition that, you know, we, we wanted to find a new name. Um, and so we, we came across a few in like emo, emo culture, uh, mm -hmm. sports, sports related names are super popular, I yeah, guess. Cause it's just like, yeah. So we, uh, it actually, we, we were looking at upsetting and possibly hookshot, um, Okay. As 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 two potential band names, and between those two, uh, Hookshot like was claimed by like one or two other small groups, and uh, Kevin did some fun like different logo design stuff since since he does a lot of our graphic design, and Upsetting just kind of looked better in in fonts across the board. So, um, yeah, and and it's you know. Upsetting definitely encompasses the kind of downer music we play, and there's there's some pretty fun uh, uh, pun potential with yeah. you know, hey hey, what's up? We are upsetting, you yeah. know, set, sets yeah, the yeah. standards nice and low, so we can only impress people. From there you there. go, like a presidential debate. Uh, ben, exactly. what are you what are you waving at me over there, Count Chocula? For what do you want? What do you want to say? I mean, forty five seconds ago, I had I had a, a one liner that I was hot for. I was like, oh, let me let me get in there, Coach. Well, Put me in the game. Oh, it's not oh, up cool. to me. So you're you're writing music that sounds neither teenage nor sexual. <laughs> and then the you know the time for the joke was gone. So. Hey, we always got time for jokes in this house. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Um, sexy teenage kids do not want downer emo music. No. Also that, yeah. So that I remember. Sense. I remember that. I rem I loved uh, teenage sex was really cool band, but then when it flipped over to upsetting, just like the music got even better. I feel like <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, we we feel the same, especially like the the song that we just released this weekend, and and some of the stuff that um, Kevin and Caleb are getting ready for next year is like some some of the best stuff I've seen them writing, and it's really fun to be be along for for part of the journey. Awesome, awesome. Um, ben, do you have anything? What are we looking at? We have some... Uh... I mean, well, you guys are premiering a music video this weekend. I think it's already we premiered, but we're, we're pushing it too. You want to tell us about that? We, you know, we know, we know the director of this music video because she has also directed the other videos that are being shown in, That's our, right. in our programming block. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so the, the song's called In November on Normal Street. It's the uh, sixth song that we uh, released this year and the last that we'll be releasing, um, which we, we kind of game planned this right at the beginning of the year and it really worked out with all of the quarantining because we, we had enough songs recorded, but um, after our first album stopped working with State Fair Records, so, so you know, we... Uh, decided since we're cruising independent uh, at, at this point in time that we would kind of release a single every other month as opposed to like a comprehensive EP to kind of give give each song its own individual lifespan and, you know, hopefully maybe catch some kind of label's eye with at least one of the songs. But uh, and the video is super awesome and looks really, really nice. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron did a great job. She and I, th this one and the music video for uh, Donnie are the two that she and I kind of like worked hand in hand together on. And it's it's really fun to not only see my partner who's passionate about filmography do all of this wonderful work with our music, but to to work with her side by side and, uh, you know, enjoy that among other things, because sometimes it's hard to to mix, you know, work, work with home life. Yeah. We definitely had fun working with her on our uh, our little promo skits and stuff that that we worked on. Yeah, yeah, fun. she's she's nothing but fun, and she she uh, has directed a, enough people at this point that she she kind of definitely takes the reins in any situation to make it a lot easier to just keep things focused. Absolutely. Uh, do you got do y'all like comics? Uh, yeah, definitely. I would say like we're all fans, especially Ke Kevin with his graphic design work. Um, he he and a lot of the dudes that he used to Ben's work with. Him. Over there, just by the way, <laughs> y'all can't see him, but y'all want some comics? Y'all want some comics? You 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 dig the good stuff? No, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of those dudes over at Llewellyn's will do some fun like kind of throwback design reimagining. So I, I see them incorporate some like kind of classic comic books. Um, I actually, fun, fun story. I had a bunch of like very derelict friends when I was in high school that, uh, were like squatters for lack of a better term. Uh, oh. and when I was 17 had a friend call me up telling me that he and all of his buddies were evicted from their apartment and no one else had a way to pick these up. So if I wanted to go over there, the door was unlocked and there was like three crates of like vintage comics uh that oh. i could just uh, swipe from them and uh yeah that was pretty cool and, and then for oh yeah i totally yes. did it and held on to them for a few years but then was in financial dire straits and ah, sold them wow. for yeah uh I but they nothing. exactly yeah they helped me make a few hundred when i was you know broke as shit so hey, dang yeah it worked out that's not for uh nothing <laughs> uh ben you have any questions I was going to say, you got some notes in here. You gave us notes about, you know, things to talk about, talking points. Sorry. Excuse me while I pull the curtain. Please. <laughs> uh, got some, there's a lot of stuff in here about death. I, I yeah. Death is on everybody's mind, you know, tongues, hearts. Especially lately. Uh, yeah. Uh, futures. Yeah. It's on everybody's to-do list. Death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, um, the, the, two songs that I just mentioned Aaron and I working on together Don, Donnie and in November on normal street, both specifically mention um, a, a time when we lost a, a pet that was near and dear to us, our, our cat Donnie. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some specific references and just, just in general. Yeah. We've, we've gone through a lot of loss and tragedy, not only death, but like near death experiences with, with our van back in September. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, just just definitely something weighing on our minds, and we try to find constructive ways to just pro process that and the emotions that go along with it, um, which is incredibly cathartic. Uh, I've definitely told a lot of people that you know dr drumming is the therapy that I can afford, so I'm glad that I have that in place of you know some someone to talk to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, and you know what I appreciated that one. Uh, you were singing on that one. Yeah, yeah. Don, Donnie's the the first of maybe hopefully some more songs that I'll be taking some like lead vocal opportunities that. on. Yeah, uh, Kevin Kevin just wrote the bass line, and during that first practice when Caleb was kind of just trying to figure out like a guitar lead to go over it, like I just kind of 
started singing along to it and ev everyone was super into the idea of you know all, all three of us kind of having opportunities to to express ourselves lyrically through the music so um it's a lot of fun also very hard singing and playing the drums is a fucking difficult task oh man and with you too because you're like always like wailing on them it's very <laughs> like upsetting sounds morose but it's very energetic music yeah yeah uh, you know yeah sad but loud folks out there yeah sad but loud that's good <laughs> well uh huh <laughs> i guess i guess i was bringing it up i thought it was kind of a an, an interesting juxtaposition that we're you know we're here talking about being creators and creating things and death is sort of a common thread that runs through all of the things you know yeah. through, through a few of these songs and uh, you know, the name of the first comic, Clerk and Bo meet an angel of death. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Aaron, the director that we were talking about, who directed our video content and directed uh, in November on Normal Street, does a lot of horror movie stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sort of like a spectrum of interpretations and, you know, uh, embracings of death, if that makes sense. Just... I think that is what it is. And it's more of an embracing, like, you know, we may fear it really kind of, but some of the mystique of death is sort of, uh, 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 uh what I was going to say it's is it's lessened in the, in our postmodern era. So we can sort of play with it a little more. Right. With Definitely. the idea. Yeah. I don't know. Just that, like the, the processing, <laughs> the digestion of death has become kind of spectrified where there are so many different ways to interpret and deal with death definitely yeah and i and i uh going back to you know aaron being able to work on on both of these projects and just the the different way that she's able to offer her perspective um it's it's been really fun working with her on these upsetting videos because she has other bands like rose garden funeral party that she works with really closely and they they kind of give her more upfront like gory spooky you know the right. that side of of death culture so it's fun for her to then come with us and offer her perspective but look more into kind of that just like somber all almost like yeah. you know uh in, in like i said the introspective intellectual side of things yeah, but now we want to know who's at your door. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't know. I'm going to text the, the house chat right now. It's probably food delivery, but... Oh, perfect. Well, this brings me to my last question, the most important one, really. Um, and this is one about the band, about all of you guys. Let's brainstorm a comic for the band. Hell yeah. I love this idea. We can make that. Um, uh, four dudes in a van driving around the country. Absolutely, yeah. So, so some things right off the bat, since I don't have them with me, that I know the the dudes would want to incorporate in here. Um, I know Drew and Caleb have both gotten super into mafia culture recently. But between uh, Drew watching a lot of The Sopranos, he's yeah. he's like a, a religious uh, viewer of that show. Um, and Caleb's been playing all of those Yakuza games that they've made for the PlayStation. Uh, I, I don't know how many gamers we have watching, but I've, I've been watching him play those and they're, they're fucking incredible. Cause they're like, the, the worlds are like as expansive as like the, the Grand Theft Auto games. And there's just as many like side quests and like little okay. mini games and shit. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been fun watching, watching Caleb play those and they're, they're very entertaining. So yeah, we're gonna go gang like you guys are. Pro yeah, you know, probably, but we we would want to keep it, um, you know, uh, revolutionary in a progressive way too. So I was I was figuring like maybe we're like mafia members, but we're also somehow tied into like the revolutionary legalization of weed or something because like we're huge donors. Yeah, yeah, you know, got got to make it fun for the communists. Not tell people about the weed legalization mafia is that the that's first the first rule? rule of the weed legalization mafia well this right is yeah. cover. your cover is a band and you get it's kind of like sinatra with the cia certainly like you you guys are getting secret messages from the yakuza the weed yakuza and uh 
y- y'all are uh, message mules for the UK. Hell yeah. Yes, absolutely. And that's what we write our songs about. That's how we encrypt the code. <laughs> songs Genius. are in code. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and and then yeah, I was I was gonna say on top of that, Ke- Kevin's definitely got to be the comic relief in in the whole like character development because he's just like anyone that's met Kevin, uh, our bass player, that one. Um, <laughs> he uh, he's literally the nicest, most easygoing guy. Like I I have made efforts to piss him off, and I still think I've only seen him mad like one whole time. So he is the unflappably uh, chill member where even when everything is just you know going to hell he's always level yeah he's he's the this is fine dog with the coffee mug while you know hell's just burning around him okay <laughs> I like this what what do you think a title would be uh <sighs> just working title no pressure working title well i i know that on top of other things uh K- Caleb would also be insistent that like even if we travel around, our home base would probably be set in Jersey. Don't ask me why, but as a band, we've just fallen in love with any time we, we can tour through New Jersey. So, uh, cool. you know, it, it'd probably be something centered around, like, the son of Jerseys or something, you know. Ooh, all right. Yeah, yeah, super. Okay. <laughs> I'm into it. Yeah. I think I just realized that I've never done a show in New Jersey. I've done New York. I've never done New Jersey. It's it's hard. Their scene sucks, but we're an emo band, so like we play house shows and like 50, 60 kids come out and it's a fucking riot. But yeah, there's there's no real venues or any kind of like structured culture out there. <laughs> awesome. I'm sure somewhere there is. Yeah, yeah. I just wouldn't know about it because I don't play the kind of music that gets Feelers invited. Putting a feeler out there, New Jersey. <laughs> we want to come rock you know in New Jersey. Uh, all watching. <laughs> Well, Charlie. 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 <laughs> Charlie. Uh, we will be showing videos and stuff. And uh, I think we probably will have already showed this by the time this little Zoom airs. But it was a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you guys so much for having all, all of us on, on the show. Uh, and we're stoked for the, the comic to come out. Right on. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Uh, absolutely charlie from upsetting that's right yes like and subscribe (laughs) those things charlie hell yeah y'all have a good one later